Hi, I'm Sebastian and I am Henrik, and we welcome you to a new video here at the Führen Gens Technology Center in Lüneburg, Germany. In the last videos, we dealt with the Neurotronic system. In the first Neurotronic video, we gave you an overview of the system, and in the second, we looked at the adjustment possibilities on the patient. And you asked us if we could also show the assembly of the joint. Of course we can do that, and this is why we would like to go through the assembly of the joint explaining how to do the maintenance of the neurotonic knee joint system. Have fun! Let's say we need to do the maintenance on a neurotonic KFO in the workshop. As you can see, I first removed the X-Dry inner padding material and as you know, this can be washed and replaced if necessary. This is not only hygienic, but it is also the best way to check the laminate for damage. We take a special look at the foot piece, because the forefoot area is very important from a functional point of view. It is the actual forefoot lever. So we check if there are any cracks or even worse, splinters in the laminate and if it is still so stiff and stable as it was after it was fabricated. In this step, we check the joints for visible damage. Today we want to concentrate on the neurotonic knee joint. As you can see, the joint is in a perfect condition. But we can also feel some play in the mediolateral direction. Before we go ahead with taking the joint apart, we check the condition of the electronic components. To do this, we connect the controller to the multipurpose device or to the expert app. This is done by pressing the mode button for 6 to 10 seconds. We make the connection Then we check the battery status, in this case it is good, it is 44%. We can check the step counter and read out the steps taken so far. And we can check if an update is available for the controller. In this case, the latest version is being used and an update is not necessary. These steps should definitely be part of any comprehensive maintenance of the neurotronic. Then we can carry out a wiring test. In this case, the joint is connected to a solenoid. But actually, we also want to find and eliminate an error. Therefore, we will fake a connection problem. Now we check the wiring again and there is no connection. Let's proceed with the disassembly of the joint. We have noticed lateral play and a connection problem between the solenoid and the controller. That is the reason why I will start with the disassembly of the small cover plate with a suitable screwdriver that is a T8 hex socket wrench. This way the small cover plate can be removed easily. We can have a look at the plug connection. It is in perfect condition, so it is probably not the cause of the defect we found. We can still remove this one and continue the disassembly from the outside. Von außen fortsetzen. Mit einem 
a T15 hex socket wrench and a T20 hex socket wrench are required for these screws. Then we can remove the cover plate We will look and get the first impression of the condition of the teeth and the filthiness. We of course know where our connection problem is. We have produced this ourselves. And to eliminate this fault, I will disassemble the control unit and pull out the cable which had been fixed with super glue so that we can replace it. Just before we reassemble the joint, we should check all the necessary parts again. But before we can do this, all parts should be cleaned thoroughly so that we can see wear and tear clearly. Parts subject to wear and tear are for example the teeth of the discs, the bearing nuts and screws, and the sliding washer. We recommend checking the neurotonic knee joint for wear and functionality every three months. Mainly the tooth disc and the pole are subject to more stress than the other components. Therefore, they should be replaced on a regular basis regardless of visible signs of wear. To prepare for the assembly, we use the Führer and Gens joint grease sparingly on the bearing nut The sliding washers need only as much grease as we can carry between two fingers Especially on the sliding washers that are on the side cover plates Use grease sparingly, as too much grease could have a negative effect on the functionality of the neurotonic joint. To make the assembly easier, we have a tip that has been proven many times. Insert both bearing nuts into the joint and cover them with a piece of tape to prevent them from falling apart. This way, we can turn the joint around and continue the assembly as usual. Put on the sliding washer, place the upper part of the joint, and place the cover plate. Initially, we deliberately assemble the joint without the locking pole so that we can prove if the joint moves freely. Pay attention to the correct tightening torque when inserting the screw. You find this information here on the milling and of course in the product information leaflet. We insert the screw and use the appropriate tool, in this case a T20 hex socket wrench, and tighten the screws with the correct torque and an appropriate torque wrench. The joint should run so freely that it falls into flexion by gravity alone. This is given. So now we should also check if the lateral play in the joint is adjusted correctly. You remember at the beginning we had a clear play in the ML direction and by replacing the worn sliding washers we could eliminate this play successfully. As you know, we provide the sliding washers in different thicknesses so you can eliminate the lateral play if necessary. After cleaning the joint, replacing the worn parts and checking the play in the joint, we can finally mount it again with the locking pole, the solenoid, as it is described in the tutorial. Take care not to damage the sliding washers during the assembly and if it does happen, please replace them. Secure the screws with an appropriate Loctite and tighten them to the recommended torque. 
To determine the correct length of the solenoid connecting cable, we connect it to the solenoid on one side and run it to the center of the controller and make a small mark. As shown previously, we have shortened the solenoid connecting cable to the correct length, removed the insulation and tinned the end. Now we can start wiring. We can simply plug the cable here into the small connector of the solenoid, embed the connector in the cover plate, place the smaller cover plate and make sure that you don't crinkle or pinch anything as you do it. Tighten the screw, but not so tight there is no torque defined for this screw. Make it just as tight as you can with your fingers. That should be enough. This screw has not much to hold. And now, we can start to glue the cable. The solenoid connection cable is now glued in the orthosis shell and ready to be wired to the controller. The cable connection help is a practical tool for this. We have marked the slots from 1 to 4. The solenoid connection cable is connected to 3 and 4. Polarity does not play a role. If we press the cable connection help towards the control unit, the connection ports open and the cables can be plugged in. After the cable has been connected, the control unit is screwed back in the controller retainer. Let's recap. We have checked and repaired the orthosis, the joint, the controller and the electronics and now would hand over the orthosis to the user as usual. But before we do that, we check the functionality of the KFO, static, bench alignment, static alignment on the patient, and dynamic alignment. Thanks for watching. I hope you had a good time. You can find more information on our website. And in order not to miss any news, follow us on Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and the expert mail. If you liked this video, Leave your thumb up, and if not, please write to us in the comments. Bye, until next time!